Hello again, so today I'm in a Volkswagen Polo GTI um, and what I'm about to say is a bit controversial but I'll say it anyway I don't like hot hatches I know the majority of the population do but I don't, I never have I just don't see the appeal really I mean, people that love them will tell you that they're practical, safe, reliable cheaper to run than a sports car quick-ish uh, you can use them every day but I just don't see the appeal. If I want to drive something with 200 horsepower, then I want it to look like a sports car, not like a Golf. And that's the problem, really. Practicality and reliability isn't sexy, is it? People will tell you that they're much more practical and functional and reliable than a two-seater sports car. And I agree to a certain extent, but so is a Volvo Estate. And I wouldn't have one of those either, so I just don't see the point. They've never really turned me on. I think the fact that there's enough room in the back for a child seat and enough room in the boot for a trip to Ikea on a weekend to fit all your flat pack furniture isn't a good enough reason for me to buy one. In my 10 years of driving and all those years of buying and selling cars, I've never chosen a car because I can fit a Billy bookcase in the back. So why would I pick a hot hatch when I could have a two-seat sports car? Now, the other reason I've never really liked hot hatches is because of the people who buy them. You know the kinds of people that I'm talking about. The people that spend all the weekly wage on Stone Island clothes. And they always wear a man bag. And their Facebook profile photo is always a picture of them and their six ripped mates with the shirts off and the man bags on in Bushwire or Ibiza Rocks or somewhere like that. They love hot hatches and that's another reason why I've never really liked them. Anyway, back to the car. So, this has a 1.4 litre four-cylinder petrol, which doesn't sound enough for a hot hatch, but it's turbocharged and supercharged, and it produces 180 horsepower, so it is pretty quick. Put it into sport mode. <laughs> that is pretty quick, actually. I've got flappy paddles on the steering wheel. It sounds pretty good too for a 1.4. You've got twin exhaust at the back. You wouldn't think it was possible to get 180 horsepower from a 1.4, but they've done it. So it has a seven speed automatic DSG gearbox, which is excellent actually. When you want to get a move on, it changes gear so quickly far faster than you ever could yourself. So yeah, when you want to get a move on it, it is very good. But like all DSGs, around town, there's no creep that you get from normal automatic with a torque converter. So if you take your foot off the brake, you don't go anywhere. Whereas in a, an old fashioned automatic with a torque converter, you take your foot off the brake and it will creep forward. So if you're trying to parallel park and you're on a bit of a hill, in this you will roll forward and then you'll touch the accelerator and then you'll end up wheel spinning back so it's not very smooth but that's a small price to pay when you consider how well the thing drives I like the interior it's quite sensible and, and well laid out everything's exactly where you'd expect it it, it does feel quite Germanic and quite quite sensible this um, interior everything you touch feels a good quality as well I like the chunky flat bottom steering wheel with the red stitching. It just looks sporty, it feels sporty. The steering is pretty perfect actually. Weighty enough, but also um, light when you need it to be from around town. Now the rear legroom's not that bad. I wouldn't want to be stuck in the back on a trip to Cornwall, but it's not bad. And uh, the boot's quite a good size for a small little hatchback. It would be very easy to live with this car. Especially as a little city car, it would be, um, would be ideal. Something that you can drive around town during the week and then have fun in it at the weekends. I quite like the styling too. Most hot hatches are quite leery and loud and aggressive looking with the spoilers and big fat exhausts. This is quite subtle and quite, quite conservative. I like that. 
Now with 180 horsepower in such a small car that doesn't weigh an awful lot, you would expect it to be quite fun to drive. But it's not really. It's okay, but it's not it's not the best in its class at all. A Ford Fiesta ST is much more fun to drive. I mean, it's front wheel drive and there's only so much fun you can have in a front wheel drive. But it just doesn't feel crazy or, or frantic enough to be a, a proper hot hatch. The performance is a bit like the styling in that it just feels a little bit, a little bit toned down, a little bit, a little bit meek, a little bit subtle. It just doesn't feel very dramatic. But that doesn't make me like it less. In fact, I quite like that about it. It's just not as thrilling to drive as a Ford Fiesta ST. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of power in this car. Plenty of power to overtake. But it just feels a little bit clinical, a little bit numb. Now this is a 2011 car and it's done quite low miles, only had one previous owner, full service history. And this will retail for about nine grand. But prices start used for about six and a half grand. So if you're looking for one, just make sure it's got full service history. Make sure it's had the DSG um, service as well. That's due at 40 or 50,000 miles. That's important. If it hasn't had that done, just go and get it done. It's only about 100 quid. Just will prolong the life of the gearbox. I mean, it handles well. It's quite nimble and agile. And actually, when you're in it, it doesn't feel like you're in a small car, which is a massive compliment to a small car. The interior feels roomy and spacious. I'm quite comfortable in these seats. I like the pattern on the seats. It's like a like a Golf GTI. I've also got an armrest. They're also quite cheap to run. If you drive them sensibly, you'll get maybe 45 miles per gallon. Road tax is quite cheap. It's about £130 a year. Now also, if you're looking for one of these used, try and get one with as few owners as possible. I normally tell people not to worry about that because with any other car, it doesn't really matter. If it's had 10 owners, who cares? As long as they've all looked after it. But with a hot hatch, I would be a bit dubious about buying one used that's had more than five or six owners. You just get the impression that it's been hammered a bit. So it's not as much fun to drive as a Fiesta ST or a Corsa VXR, but I do quite like the fact that it feels a bit more mature than those two. They're a little bit wild and a little bit raw, whereas this is a little bit more grown up. I quite like that. And for that reason, I would probably buy one. So it turns out one of the few hot hatches I would buy isn't all that hot. <laughs> Who knew? Anyway, thanks once again for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I've got plenty more videos to come. So yeah, see you next time.